Good morning and welcome to Prayer and Devotion on this Saturday, February 26th, starting off today with Lauren Daigle's How Can It Be? And we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning as we move on in Mark's Gospel. It is good to be with all of you back uh, in New Jersey uh, today, um, came back a day ago, um, but it is good to be with you this morning. So let me say good morning to Augusta and Priscilla. I'm glad you're here praying for you this morning and Michelle and Daniel, welcome, holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Donna and Janet. I'm glad you're here praying for you and Barbara and Rosetta, welcome holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Andrew and Sheila. It's good to have you here. And Ros did I say? I did say hi to Rosetta. Good morning, Shirley and Andrea. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. And Susan and Ingrid. So this is our, our smaller Saturday morning uh, crew. It's good to be with all of you as we start this day. 
Today we are moving along in Mark, um, and we're going to be looking at um, a, a part of the scripture that um, usually Mark is very brief. You know, he kind of just gives you a little, little, a smaller version. But for some reason, this portion of today's scripture, uh, when we see it in Matthew, is very short. Mark elaborates on it. So we're going to talk about that. We're looking at specifically at Mark 6, and I'm going to be beginning, I'm going to be starting in verse 14. So Mark 6, verse 14. And yeah. So um, my as you open up to Mark 6, my name is Cindy Stauffer. Uh, blessed to serve as the pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. And it's good to start the day with all of you rooting ourselves in God's word. If you're new, uh, we are walking through the Gospel of Mark, uh, and today we are in uh, chapter 6, verse 14. So let's jump in there and see what uh, good news there is for us this day. It's, it's a little rough on the good news, but we'll get there. We will, always. So Mark 6, uh, verse 14 says this. King Herod heard of it. So if we go back one verse in 13, it says they cast out many. This is the disciples. Karen shared this yesterday. The disciples went out and it said they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. And now we're in verse 14. King Her Herod heard of it. For Jesus' name had become known. Some were saying, John the baptizer has been raised from the dead. And for this reason, sorry, uh, these powers are at work in him. But others said, it is Elijah. And others said, it is a prophet like one of the prophets of old. But when Herod heard of it, he said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men um, who arrested John and bound him and put him in prison on account of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because Herod had married her. For John had been telling Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. And Herodias had a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was righteous and a holy man, and he protected him. When he heard him, he was greatly perplexed, and yet he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers and officers and for the leaders in, of Galilee. When his daughter Herodias's, when his daughter Herodias came in and danced, she pleased Herod and his guest. And the king said to the girl, "Ask me for whatever you wish, and I will give it." And he solemnly swore to her, whatever you ask me, I will give you even half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? She replied, the head of John the baptizer. Immediately, she rushed back to the king and requested, I want you to give me at once the head of John the Baptist on a platter. And the king was deeply grieved, yet out of regard for his oaths and for his guests, he did not want to refuse her. Immediately the king sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. And he went and beheaded him in the prison, brought his head on a platter and gave it to the girl. Then the girl gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. Well, this is not what you came to hear, or maybe it is on this Saturday morning. Um, 
So it's an interesting story. It's the only um, gospel where we get the full story. Um, and I think the other thing that's really interesting is that Mark's in Mark's gospel, Herod um, has a lot of respect for for John the Baptist, almost fears John the Baptist. Um, but in Matthew's gospel, he wants him dead. So um, what is Mark trying to show us here? Like what what is going on? And there's probably a lot, many things that we could focus on today, but today I'm gonna to talk about sin, right? So what we're, what we're looking at here is we've got, it starts off with Herod kind of panicked, right? You know, he, he had, he had killed Herod. I mean, he had killed John the Baptist. And now this Jesus comes around and he's worried that somehow this is John the Baptist reincarnated in Jesus. And he's panicked because he knows um, he has done something wrong. Um, and then we have Herodias, his wife, the wife. Uh, and so the daughter, the one that danced, not only is she Herod's daughter, uh, uh, stepdaughter. She's also Herod's niece, right? He has taken his brother's wife. And both Herodias, the wife, and Herod know that this is wrong. They know it's wrong. And John points it out. John says, this is sinful. This is wrong. You shouldn't be doing this. And Instead of, uh, instead of acknowledging that they're wrong, because they know inside, I'm sure, on some level they're wrong, they, they dig in deeper and they want him dead. And when, when uh, Herod does this, now he has killed John. He's got a double sin, right? He, he, has, he has sinned by taking his brother's wife. Now he has sinned by killing a holy man. And, and the paranoia sets in, right? He is so afraid of this Jesus. Now, it's not the same Herod when Jesus was born. This is Herod's son, okay? So the next Herod, Herod Antipas. And I think it's so interesting when I look at this story because in the world around us, we, I'm not just talking about the world, we're a part of this, people will go to great lengths to hide their sin. Whatever they can do to, to, to just not be known, right? Which leads us down further paths of whether it's lying about our sin or doing something to cover up the sin. Um, people, we human beings will go to great lengths to not admit that we have done something wrong even to the lengths of cutting off the head of a holy man. We see it in our world around us all the time. Which brings me back to today's opening song, How Can It Be? Because we live with these sins, right? We live with the ways that we have harmed others, the ways that we have harmed ourselves. We we have this feeling that there's nothing that could possibly save us. Like it becomes a great burden. I can only imagine for Herod, it was a burden. Not only that he had done something wrong, but that he was going to be found out. You know, that, that somehow at some point, this, what he has done will do him in, will end his life. Um, so this song by Lauren Daigle starts out with this sin that, that just can't, there's no way that anyone could possibly forgive her. That she, there's no way that she could um, have this sin made white, right? Made clean. But she finds that grace. And the question comes again and again, how can it be? How can it be that Christ would give his life for mine? So here's Herod trying to save his life, but Christ would give his life for mine. How can it be? 
That is the gift that you and I, and even Herod, would have been given if only he had acknowledged his sin, right? What are the sins that are keeping us in bondage this day? So afraid that if any one person knew about the depth of our sin, that that, that would be the end for us. What are those things that we think God can't possibly clean up in our lives? My friends, I'm telling you that Jesus has paid the price for you and I. We do not have to live hiding those places, that grace has come for us. And maybe we ask the question too, how can it be? And the answer is God's love for you and I is greater than the sin in our lives. God wants us to be made free. And God wanted Herod as well, but he could not, he could not acknowledge the sin. So today, what is that which is holding you in bondage? And can you lift that up? Can you ask for God's grace and forgiveness this day to free you from the places in your life where you are living in bondage? You do not have to remain in those places. God wants to free you this day. So as we come into prayer, I lift up each one of you. I'm lifting myself up, the places in my life uh, where I have not followed God's will, places where I have harmed myself, places where I have harmed those around me, and asked once again for God's Let's, in this time, ask once again for God's forgiveness and grace. Let us pray. God of grace and mercy, we come this morning acknowledging all the ways that we have not followed your will, ways that we have walked that have caused harm, to those around us, harm to those that we love, harm to ourselves, harm to our world, harm to your creation. Ways that we have followed paths that, that are for our own glory and not yours. And so Lord, we come before you today lifting up our sin, asking for your grace to rush in, to free us, to make all that is marred clean once again. Forgive us, Lord, for we have sinned against you and against our neighbor and against ourselves. And Lord, we don't wanna live this way any longer. How can it be that you would love us even with the paths that we have followed, even in the brokenness of our lives, how can it be that you would give your life for us? And so this morning, Lord, we say thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that gift freely given that we might experience life, real life, the life that you planned for us. Lord, we lift up all our sin before you today and ask for your grace, for your forgiveness to make us new this day. How can it be? 
thanks be to God. Thank you, Lord. We ask all of this in your precious name, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. How can it be? This morning, my friends, through Christ, you are free. Free to follow, free to know that you are loved beyond the places that you have made mistakes. God loves you, and so do I. Have a very blessed day. Tomorrow we are going up to the mountaintop. It is Transfiguration Sunday, so we've got drama and all kinds of wonderful things in our worship tomorrow. So I look forward to seeing you at 11, whether you're with us in person or online. Uh, I will see you tomorrow at 11. Have a very blessed day, my friends. Bye.